Namaste, Shalom, Benvenidos, Tikanis. I could go on in the 390 dialects and languages that are spoken throughout Queens, but I'll spare you the time. My name is Rhonda Binda, and I'm honored to serve as the Queens Deputy Borough President. Queens is the place that immigrants from over 190 countries around the world have chosen to make their home. A recent report from Comptroller Tam DiNapoli revealed that most tourists, business visitors, and immigrants coming to America come through New York first, coming to Queens. That is what has given us our unparalleled diversity. It's the greatest asset. And so there's no place for hate in Queens. There's no place for violence. And there's no louder voice for peace and unity than our borough president, Donovan Richards Jr. He's in the business of building bridges, literally and figuratively. Bringing people of all backgrounds, all ethnicities, all faiths together to join in fellowship, culture sharing, and problem solving like today. The QBP has shown us that we have much more in common than sets us apart. On the heels of George Floyd anniversary that changed the world forever, and today being the birthday of Gautama Buddha, who would have been 2,656 years young, his words of peace of, and love still ring just as he said, there isn't enough darkness in the world to snuff out the light of one little candle. I now want to introduce you to our Queensborough President, Donovan Richards Jr., who needs no introduction because you know that he's been working relentlessly advocating for peace and unity in the great borough of Queens. We thank you for constantly being the leader that we can depend on. Our borough president, Donovan Richards Jr. Thank you and let's give it up for our deputy borough president and Rhonda Benda and I did not pay her to say those things. All right, maybe I did. <laughs> but good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us on this important but solemn occasion, especially one day after the one year anniversary death of George Floyd. Let me start by saying that being silent, to be silent, is to be complicit. And we're not going to be complicit here in Queens County. You know, it is deeply upsetting that we have to gather here yet again because the hate won't stop. Let me say this again. It's ridiculous how many times we've had to come into the Helen Marshall Cultural Center or stand outside on the steps of Borough Hall or to attend rallies all across this borough simply because the hate won't stop. I'm simply getting tired of it. But I know just as Dr. King said, we have to keep marching on. We're here to continue to stand against hate. We can never get too tired to stand up against hate. Over the course of the last few weeks, there have been several incidents let me just start with some of them. An Asian man just this week pushed on to the subway tracks in Long Island City. Let me be clear, this is unacceptable. And I don't care who's doing the hating, it is unacceptable and you have and must be held accountable. Let's move on to the next case two cases of anti-Semitism in our neighboring borough of Brooklyn. Let me talk about this for a second. What we've seen happening over the course of the last few weeks can't be tolerated in our city. Some of the rhetoric being spewed across our city and country cannot be tolerated. Whether you're Asian or Jewish, you belong here. That was what we entitled the march we did a few week, a weeks ago in Flushing. We entitled that for a simple reason. 
that we understand that here in Queens that our diversity is our strength. And for anyone who seeks to build walls, especially during a pandemic, we're going to knock those walls down each and every time because we believe in building bridges here in Queens County. Some of the displays of anti-Semitism have also been ridiculous. Don't show me a map without Israel on it. Israel has the right to exist. I've been to Israel, been to Ramallah, been to Jerusalem. As much as it's politically inconvenient to weigh in on these things, my stance doesn't change. We know that there needs to be a two-state solution. But I'm not here to talk <laughs> policy in the Middle East. I'm here to talk about what's happening here. People simply being attacked for who they are. Whether you are Asian, Jewish, Black, Muslim, you belong here. Vandalism at our churches and mosques, as we saw just a few days ago as well. When will it stop? How many times must we go through this? We rallied. We held the vigil. We marched. We made our voices loud and clear. Yet, hate continues to rise. But today, tonight, in this atrium, we are one Queens. We don't give up. Queens is proud of its diversity. Look at these leaders, not simply behind me, but besides me. Leaders who are in front of me, who've been fighting these fights for a long time, from all persuasion. Look at this. This is what diversity looks like. We understand our diversity is our strength. Our neighborhoods are home to families that speak close to 350 languages and come from nearly as many countries as those represented at the United Nations. In Queens, no one should live in Queens than fear. In Queens, we all belong here. That's the theme today. You're going to hear me say it over and over again. Today we take a stand and we continue to unite. Whether you are Jewish, Muslim, Catholic, Asian, Black, Latinx, LGBTQ+, a person with a disability, a woman, non-binary, an immigrant, etc., etc. No matter your religion, identity, or background, we are all in this together, Queens. And I know words are not enough. That is why my office has called for additional funding to agencies, such as the Office to Prevent Hate Crimes, which I was a co-sponsor of in the City Council. I moved this bill in the City Council to create this office, along with my Jewish and Asian colleagues, because we saw hate rearing its ugly head three years ago. We also are continuing to work with the New York City Commission on Human Rights to do more education. I'm reminded of being in Flushing a few weeks ago where my son was at a basketball court. My wife attended. And we attended a basketball tournament. I think Stephen Lee is here. Who put this basketball tournament together because there was an Asian kid on that playground playing basketball who was told he didn't belong here. Steven and others put together a basketball tournament with kids from all walks of life to let them know they all belong here. But I'm reminded of what I saw on that playground because my son didn't want to listen to my speech. Can you believe it? He went to the playground on it. But in that playground, there were Asian kids. 
there were black kids, there were Jewish kids, there were white kids, there were Latino kids. And they all played together. They didn't know they were different. It lets you know that hate is taught. When our children come into the world, they don't see what we see. We have to be better. This is why we also, just moving on from that, continue to partner with our Queens District Attorney's Office. I want to thank the NYPD for being here and others to host hate crime forums. And just yesterday, we did another one right here to ensure we're connecting all of our communities with the different resources to combat this scourging hate. We cannot and will not let this rise in hate and bias acts tear us down nor will we let it divide us, because we know that's what the haters want. Hate flourishes when we do not have togetherness, but I refuse to let us be split. We will always come together in Queens County. That is why this unity rally is so important. It is why so many leaders have come today to stand. Standing is an act. And today we show clearly and proudly that we stand together against hate. I am deeply proud to turn it over to our faith and immigrant community leaders because their voice is more important than my voice. I want to thank them because their leadership and commitment to our borough is what makes our borough great. So we want the haters to get a good look at what Queens looks like. We want them to know that we're not going to kowtow to you, that we're not going to live in fear, that our children are going to be able to walk the basketball courts, that our seniors are going to be able to get on the trains, that our Asian community is going to be able to get on a train without being pushed in front of them. This is why we're here. An affront on one of us is an affront on each and every one of us. Let me also add that leadership isn't about casting stones at other folks. Whether you agree with them or not, leadership is about bringing people together. It's about problem solving. And this is why we are here today hosting this at Borough Hall, to send that clear message that it's not about preaching divisiveness that Dr. King taught us many lessons, and we need to continue to abide by those lessons. With that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to our Deputy Borough President, who will call on our fellow leaders to speak. Thank you all for being here. Thank you very much, Borough President Richards, for being the face of the bold new leadership in Queens. First, I'd like to call Rabbi Mark Hauserman, who is from the Reformed Temple of Forest Hills. Thank you. It is said in the Bible that we are created in God's image. It's Selim Elohim. Not only the people who look like you, not only the people who pray like you, not only the people who are from the same country, not only those who love people the same way you do, everyone. We are all created in God's image. When you attack another person, you are attacking God. When you hate another person for being different, you are hating yourself. Being in the image of God is a huge responsibility. It means living every day in the power and holiness of everyone. It means treating all people with the kindness we seek for ourselves. For those who seek violence against Jews, Muslims, Blacks, Asians, Latinx, women, LGBTQ individuals, and everyone else finding such cruelty, you are doing violence to God and to yourself. Let us only accept a world of inclusion and love. Truly, we can create the holiness of everyone. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Rabbi. Next, I'd love to call Professor Madukala Kandelwal from Queens College, Director of Asian American Center. Thank you. Hello, and good afternoon. I want to say at the very outset that to say Queens is a diverse county, probably one of the most diverse places on this earth, is an understatement. We have been talking about this for at least three decades, that we are very diverse here. What we are experiencing now is a whole different level of awareness that we need to have about this cultural diversity. I really feel the times when we do lip service to diversity, limiting our respect and appreciation of people's cultures to their foods, and not respecting and not hurting, you know, going against like really the people and the communities. So what is this cultural diversity about then that we are celebrating? I think we should be ready for a new generation of leaders who are ready to look into the real issues of this hatred. Where is it stemming from? And to me, who has studied the Queen's diverse counties for three decades now, over three decades, and I teach about it at Queen's College, and I'm also very happy to be an advisor to Borough President's Queens General Assembly, where we come together from different parts of Queens, but also different cultures and communities and community boards to share our issues, to share our common concerns as well. You know, I'm an immigrant myself. And I want to say, I sometimes do understand, you know, how it must be feeling when people see their neighborhoods changing. It's almost the life is slipping out of their hands. But to blame some people for that is more than ignorance. It is like really saying that you don't belong here, we belong here. Just because some people's families have been here for a few more generations than mine. So it is a question about who belongs here. And I, as an Asian American, I want to salute the Black Lives Matter because they are standing up not only for African Americans, but for years of struggle against racist hatred and hate crimes and, I would say, racial, you know, behavior towards people. That, you know, we see these incidents which are absolutely unacceptable, the racial violence, but so are racial microaggressions that we see all the time. And when something like COVID-19 happens, or we saw 20 years ago when 9-11 happens, it's like, and we have seen this throughout US history, that certain groups are targeted as un-American, as suspects. And so that has to stop. And I really feel this is not a small matter. This should not go away if the hate crimes go down temporarily. This is a time that we should look very, very deep into the, the dynamics, into what makes us proud about Queen's cultural diversity. And I want to say this is a very, very serious matter. As some of you know, a chronicler of Queen's diversity, an anthropologist whom I'm very proud to call my mentor, Professor Roger Sanjak, wrote in his book, The Future of Us All. This is a shared future that we want to build and in which hate has no place at all. So this is 
an issue for the future of our borough, the future of the city, the future of this nation. That's what we are talking about. No less, no more than that. So we should really look at this moment um, as a history-making moment. What kind of future do we want to live in? So thank you so much. I hope this is a moment when a new reflection will start and we stand together instead of being divided into racial groups and you know at one point of time somebody comes up the other point of time somebody else comes up we are all as borough president said together in this thank you so much thank you for those powerful words professor i'd like to call the president and ceo of the Chinese Planning Council, Wayne Ho. Thank you, Rhonda. Uh, I want to thank the uh, borough president of Queens, Donovan Richards, for hosting us today. I'm Wayne Ho, and I run the Chinese American Planning Council, CPC. We're the largest Asian American social services nonprofit in the country, serving 60,000 New Yorkers each year uh, in every neighborhood of New York. Last March, when New Yorkers were told to stay home, my staff were out in the community serving the most vulnerable. They were risking their health and their family's health to serve the most vulnerable. But throughout this past year, they have been victims of violence. They have had people spit at them, throw things at them, push them, and other things happen to them. And many of my staff are Asian American. We also hire black, brown, uh, lot women lgbtq differentially abled populations so in every neighborhood of new york every new yorker must have safety and dignity and belonging where they work study play live and worship and that's why i am glad that we are gathered here today to say that hate has no place in new york city hate has no place in queens this is the time not for divisiveness this is the time for us to have unity. So I am excited that we are all continuing to stand together today to say that we have solidarity and we support every community member of New York City. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. I know we've learned so much from you over these past few months. I'm pleased to invite Rabbi Schreier to give a few words. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I want to start by thanking the borough president and everyone who's been involved in organizing this. I want to thank all of the elected officials, the NYPD, and everyone who's just been so on top of everything during this wave of hate and just being so strong in their values and making sure that we all feel safe walking up and down our neighborhood. I want to echo everything everyone has said, condemning all forms of hate in any capacity we're a place of openness, we love everybody, and we want to make sure that everyone feels safe in every capacity. But I want to discuss for one quick second a quick story that maybe can give us an insight as to how exactly we are supposed to approach this. There's an old tale told of a young idealistic individual who wanted to go and change the world, make an impact on the entire world, and change the way everything is done. So they were working and working, but it just wasn't going through, it just wasn't happening, so they decided Instead of changing the world, I'm going to change my community. Change the whole community, it's going to be amazing, everything's going to be different. And they worked and worked, but nothing happened. Nothing changed, so they said, fine, I'll just change my family. And again, nothing changed, so they finally looked in the mirror and decided, I can only work on changing myself. And they worked and worked, and they were able to change themselves. And all of a sudden, after they changed themselves, they saw their family was different. Their community was different, and ultimately the world was different. Our job, our goal for what we can potentially do, of course we have to reach out to our officials, NYPD, and we thank everyone so much again for all their support, but we have to work on changing ourselves. It starts with us, the type of speech that we use, the type of talk that we interact with, and the type of actions that we go, and hopefully as individuals, we can all continue to work towards the loving environment that we know that Queens is, we hope for continued success, continued safety, and everyone should only know of good things. Have a wonderful night, and hopefully this should all be behind us, and we should continue to work together for many, many years to come.
Thank you so much for your partnership. I'd like to call the president of La Jornada, Pedro Rodriguez, please. He may be en route. Okay, maybe en he's may Okay, all right. I'd like to then introduce Mr. Satnam Singh. He is the acting um, president and chair of South Asian American Voice, and thank you for partnering with the borough president yesterday at the Asian Business Roundtable. Thank you very much. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to thank you for giving me the honor to speak here. As well, we all know our community has gone through a lot of COVID-19 pandemic, hasn't been, I guess my eyes are, okay. Pandemic has been easy for, a, for anyone. Unfortunately, we have been seeing an increase in hate crime throughout our Queen's neighborhood. Lately, the unity of our community has decreased and our people have been getting scared due to hate crimes. We all deserve to live in a peaceful environment. We feel safe for families and friends. It hurt to see how much hatred is being spread throughout our community it need to come to an end now. Today, we all are here as community leader to help spread peaceful awareness and remember to respect each other. Let's keep educating our friends and family not to fall under the pressure of hate, crime, and help unite our communities together. Out of all five boroughs, Queen Borough is known for the most diverse borough. This is our time to shine and grow as a community. My humble request to all of you is to start working seriously on hate crime and, and all negativities. Let's start working together to grow toward peaceful and positive neighborhood. Thank you and have a great evening. Bye. We have some of our elected officials here today. We're so pleased to have them here, and I'd love to call on Councilmember Barry Gridencik. Thank you, Councilmember. Thank you, Deputy. Um, I hate to talk with everybody in my back, but um, I want to thank the Borough President. Um, in his short time in office, um, he has shown incredible leadership on bringing people together and it is noticed and it is appreciated in every corner of the Borough of Queens. So I want to thank you, Donovan. I want to thank you for that. I have been in public life in this borough for over a third of a century, working for great people like Claire Schulman, Helen Marshall, Nettie Mayerson, Melinda Katz, and our homegrown governor, Mario Cuomo. My message to the haters, to the people that, for whatever reason, can't stand people who don't look like them, don't sound like them, don't act like them, don't speak like them, you're lost. Look at the people behind me, and when you leave this building, look at the people as you walk down any street in Queens, any single street, you will see an unmatched diversity. We live together, we go to school together, we ride the bus and the subway and the Long Island Railroad together, we play together in the parks, our kids go to school together, and sometimes we even fall in love with each other. And we are not going away. My parents came here in the mid-50s. I'm the son of immigrants. My parents came from the Bronx. That's my inside joke. But my mother used to say it was like moving to another country. It was so different, Queens. But my message to everybody, you want to hate, it ain't working on the streets of Queens. It ain't going to work here. It is never going to work here. We are too busy building a new life here in the city of New York. We're too busy accepting immigrants that right now as we speak 
are coming off planes at JFK Airport and building new lives here in this great borough. So just cut it out, otherwise you're gonna end up somewhere where you don't wanna be. We love each other, we care for each other, and I wanna thank every single person, my colleagues in government, for being here tonight. And we're gonna to continue to do this until everybody gets the message right. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much, council member. I'd like to acknowledge at this time that we have Justin Connor, who is representing Congressman Tom Swazi here. We're very excited about his new office in Bayside, in Queens. Next, I'd love to call up Tasman Uden from Turning Point for Women and Families. Thank you, Tasman. Salams, greetings of peace. Um, thank you, Queensborough President, for the invitation to stand here today. My name is Tasmin Udin, and the way I like to introduce myself is I am human, I am Muslim, I am a proud New Yorker, the daughter of Bangladeshi immigrants, and today I'm here on behalf of Turning Point for Women and Families, where I serve as the Youth Program Director. Um, I have the distinct pleasure of working with our youth on several different projects. And one of them is our Arise New York anti-bullying and hate, time, hate crimes project. Um, and this was a project that started in 2010 by our youth members who were facing a lot of hate and discrimination um, in post 9-11 New York. While we facilitate a lot of workshops throughout the year, each summer we hold a citywide summit where youth come together um, to address bullying, hate crimes, and really to provide them with the tools that they need to become upstanders who can safely intervene, who can report incidents of dis hate and discrimination. And I want to echo something that the Queensboro president said earlier, you know. Um, children aren't born hating, right? They learn it from us. And so I'm echoing what he said, where we have to be good role models. We have to do better. Um, we have our next Arise New York Summit coming up on August 21st, where we'll be addressing the rise in hate crimes against our, the anti-Asian violence that's been happening. And so we know that since the pandemic started, there have been over 3,800 incidents of anti-Asian violence and a 1,900% increase in anti-Asian related hate crimes in New York City alone. That is unacceptable. Um, communities like mine who have been targeted and are being targeted, whether it's the Asian community, Muslims, Sikh, or the Jewish community, are all too familiar with the fear, the trauma, the uncertainty, the hypervigilance that comes with being under attack. The emotional and mental impact, health impacts of feeling unsafe is very real. And we know, as leaders, that we need to ensure that our communities are safe, that they have access to the resources that they need. We encourage our community members to look out for each other because that's what we do, right? Um, to check in on folks who might be feeling overwhelmed and fearful and to really show up and speak up when we see and we witness any person being harmed. As leaders in Queens, let us remember that attacks and harassment on any member of our community is an attack and affront to all of us. It's an honor to represent Turning Point today and to stand with our leaders as we recommit ourselves to a, to a hate-free Queens and a, new, a, and a united New York City. Thank you. Thank you. I'd love to acknowledge that Shazak is in the house today. Thank you for your continued partnership. as well as Anthony Lemma, and I'd like to introduce the Assemblyman David Weprin. Thank you, uh, Rhonda, and uh, thank you, uh, Borough President Donovan Richards, for once again uh, bringing us together, which uh, we have done on so many occasions, uh, uh, many happy occasions, but unfortunately, uh, too many occasions uh, like this, where we're pointing out uh, hate when hate rears its ugly head. Uh, look behind me. This is what Queens looks like. Yeah. 
You know, this is the diversity of Queens, and our strength is in our diversity. Uh, and it's, it's unfortunate. It's so important that we all come together anytime hate uh, rears its ugly head. One day it's again against one group, and we've had a, seems to be more uh, anti-Asian and anti-Semitic uh, incidents uh, recently. But, you know, I've lived as a, my whole life in Queens, but as an elected official for about 20 years, uh, and uh, hate, unfortunately, has reared its ugly head so many times. But it's so important that we all come together uh, and, a hate, and recognize that a hate crime against any one of us uh, is really a hate crime against all of us. Uh, and that's why it's so important that we have to do events like this. Uh, and uh, thank you all uh, for coming together. And thank you, uh, Borough President Donovan Richards, uh, for unfortunately having to bring us all together uh, on these type of incidents. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership, Assemblyman. We know you have a busy schedule. We really appreciate you making it to Borough Hall today. Next, I'd love to call Michael Nussbaum. He's the president of the Jewish Community Council here in Queens. I want to thank uh, the borough president for giving all of us an opportunity to say once again, and Donovan said it in the beginning, we do this too often. I'm probably, probably the oldest person in this room. Yeah. I'm 74, but more important, I've lived here in Queens just about my whole life. I went to Queens College with Andrew Goodman, who lost his life in the 60s in Mississippi. I remember in the 70s, when I worked in government, we supported the Korean grocery store people in Brooklyn that had a boycott from the African-American community. I had the privilege in the 80s of helping to produce a film called Who Killed Vincent Chin? The first hate crime in America where I was able to lobby the Reagan administration to charge a father and a son for a hate crime. And it's called Who Killed Vincent Chin? because he was murdered, and the two gentlemen that killed him had not spent a day in jail. The first Taiwanese American that was killed, and he was nominated for Academy Award in 87. In 2000, I was president of the American Jewish Congress, and we worked in Albany with many of the legislators to pass the first hate crime bill. So Donovan, unfortunately, we're going to be doing this much, much too often. So I'm going to speak an inconvenient truth tonight, saying things that may be uncomfortable, but I think it has to be said. My parents came from Eastern Europe. Our families were pushed away out of the ghettos from Russia to Poland. Some came to America, obviously. Others went to Israel, and others got caught in concentration camps. We have suffered as human beings not just as a Muslim or a Jew or an Asian. There's something about the human condition that breeds hate. And we always teach children are not born in their DNA with hate. They're taught hate. When our elected officials who are looked upon as leaders spew venom and hatred and other elected officials don't call them out. They are complicit in that hate. Congressman Green on the right, to me, the congresswoman on the left, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez, is equal. They are the same. They come from different perspectives, but they are the same. When one person spews hate against a nation, or against an individual, or claims incorrectly what happens in the world, or in this country. It incites people to hate. When a person has to wear a yarmulke in the house because they're afraid to come outside, 
Black parents teach their children how to behave with police. Jewish families are now teaching their children, girls don't wear the Star of David, and boys, when you're out, take off your yarmulke. What have we become? I'm not blaming one politician or one Democratic Party or one Republican Party. There's something about hate that if it's not allowed to be stampeded down and rendered in the fire, then it's going to continue. And we're going to be here again and again. I've been here too long. But as the president of the Queens Jewish Community Council, I will march with anyone and bring the Jewish community to you, to your mosques, to your temples, to your homes, because I expect that you will do it with me. If there is a Nazi symbol on a synagogue or someone destructs a mosque, we will be there. But Queens, we say the word, we're diverse. We're really not. We live in our own ghettos. Queens is diverse from a population, but we are not as diverse as we believe we are because we go back to our homes. We go back to our segregated communities, whether it be the Sikh community in one area or the Korean community in one area or the Jewish community in one area. I can go on and on. But we have to live together. We have to respect each other. But most important, we need leaders today from Congress and the White House to speak out against anyone, Democrat or Republican. The silence recently from our leaders in Washington not to condemn Green or Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez. That is wrong. And the people on the left and the right, when someone on the left makes you demand to sign a document that says you will not go to Israel, that you will support the boycott and divestiture movement, because if you don't, you're not getting my support. And someone on the right that says, can't believe in that election this year. You can't believe there was a demonstration that nearly destroyed the Capitol on January 6th. If you don't speak out on reality, you're living in a dream world, but you're spewing hate in a way that to me is totally unacceptable. We come here often, we care about our communities, we care about our kids, but if we can, as elected officials here, and we have some great counsel here, Denise Miller, the first Muslim person that was elected to the city council from Queens. And you got Barry, and you got Jim Gennaro, and, and you got uh, David here, David Weber. You got people that care and come out. But I'm tired of coming out. We got to figure out, each of us, to teach and look within ourselves and be honest. The religious leaders, but again, I don't know why I say this, if the elected leadership of this city and this country not get together and just pass a hate crimes bill that should have been done years ago that finally got done, okay, there's something wrong. And I'm sorry I was a little bit wrong, but that's who I am. That's my opinion. But I care too much about this county. I care too much about the people that live here, that worship here. When a Korean church wants to build in a community and told, you can't build your your church within our block because we don't like you. That happens. Or whether it be a mosque or a synagogue. I don't understand it. I know I, I'm a little bit old. Right now. I'm sorry. Okay? But I'm just pleading with everybody. Let's leave here with a mission. Not leave here and pat ourselves on the back. Thank you. Thank you for your passion, Mr. Nussbaum. We're also so pleased to have my council member, Jim Gennaro. We liked him so much, we elected him twice, and would love for him to come and say a few words. Thank you, Rhonda. Um, let me follow up a little bit on what uh, Michael just said, and I think one way to at what he was talking about with regard to political leadership on both 
sides of the aisle. I think we need political leaders throughout this country that are more like Donovan Richards. That's what I think we need. And the people standing here um, are, are, are about what Donovan is about. It's about bringing people together uh, and also and also doing. Uh, Gandhi said that the future depends upon what you do today. And Rabbi spoke earlier about a person child tries to change the world, tries to change the community, tries to change his family then ultimately changes himself. And um, I, I, I think that is where it starts. Um, and in terms of where hatred flourishes, where it is taught, it's taught in the home. That's where it happens. And so there is, you know, the various programs that people are trying to talk to, they're trying to talk to folks and get them, you know, on have a proper perspective, and I think that's important, but we can't replace what goes on at all. So we here as, as leaders, I think, have to be um, more like Donovan, more like the people here. I don't want to include myself in that group, but I'm here. Uh, and, 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 uh, and, you know, teach a message and, and, and to the extent that you are a leader and you're in the public sphere uh, and you've you know, been elected, you know, to the extent that remarks that you may make can be interpreted as hateful, you're not doing your job. And so, um, so it is. Uh, so I think that's what we have to do. But we will continue to come out and make our voices heard and to tell this borough and tell the haters in this borough what this borough is all about and this borough will tell the country and the world what unity is all about and I strive to be a better person so that, so that I can be a bigger part of that conversation and I thank everyone for being here I thank in a special way Rabbi Mark Kaiserman, who married me and my wife, Wendy, eight months and 20 days ago. And how does a Catholic kid get married by a rabbi? It's a long story, but very grateful to him and his wisdom and to everyone here. May God bless you all. Thank you, council member. We are in for a treat. We have the opportunity to hear from Pastor John Boyd from the Greater New Bethel Ministries. Thank you. First, giving honor to God, God of peace, God of love. God of justice. To our borough president, one of the hardest working men in government. To our deputy borough pre president. To our elected officials, to our fellow clergy and community leaders. When you look up the word hate, it is defined in Webster as a strong dislike. So we must come to a, a, a reality of the things that we strongly dislike and how we speak to those dislikes within our own homes, within our own communities. The Bible says God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows is what he reaps. My father once taught me that if you sow to the whirlwind, you will reap a tornado. Today we stand here in the people's house to speak and to cry out against hatred, bigotry, prejudice, and racism. To ask a simple question, why can't we just love one another? Jesus said to love him with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength. And to love your neighbor, your brother, your sister, as much as you love yourself. So let us put away the flames of separation 
and let us declare today a new season in time to join together to make the community of Queens the world's barrel a place of harmony, love, and peace. This is the place it should be. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. We've been joined by Imam Safraz Bacchus. Please join us here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Imam Safraz Bacchus. I start by saying that over the past few decades, we have witnessed an increase in violent hate crimes across America. The litany of names have become familiar, particularly after the attack of September 11, 2001. Hate-based attack upon Muslims, Sikhs, and other minority groups has increased at a frightening rate. Anti-Semitism, white supremacy, and other forms of bigotry have all risen dramatically in the United States in recent years, as shown by the FBI hate crime statistics. Today, I stand with my fellow New Yorkers, my brothers and my sisters, to denounce all form of violence, all form of aggression that is dedicated towards Muslims and Jewish communities. We stand with one strong voice as we denounce in the strongest storm, all forms of vicious, viciousness, bigotry, and violence that is motivated by hate against African Americans, Asians, Americans, and Pacific Islanders, and other minority groups. It should be noted that by collecting accurate information about these hate crimes, government and non-governmental organization can better plan and program educational activities to combat hatred. While hate crime laws cannot eliminate bigotry, legislation serves as a deterrent to those individuals who choose to act on their hatred by imposing stricter penalties against the perpetrators of these crimes. Although Although the strict punishment is critical, the goal of hate crime laws is often tied to the idea of educating perpetrators, law enforcement officers, and general public about the surge of hate in our society. Allow me to end by a statement in the glorious Quran where God Almighty, He says, O people, we have created you from a single man and a single woman and made you into various race and tribes so that you may recognize each other. Indeed, in God's eyes, the most honorable of you are those who are mindful of Him. And indeed, God is aware of everything that we do. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Thank you very much. I'd love to call now Pedro Rodriguez from La Jornada.
have changed. We have changed and become acceptable. Today, my secret, we're in a park in Corona, New York, giving out vaccines, giving out. Last week, our Jewish friends came to our pantry and decided to help us build a refrigerator to feed children and families. Why? Because we love each other. One year and a day ago, a young man was assassinated in Minneapolis because of his face. The year before, 28 Mexican Americans were assassinated because of where they come from. Last month, Asian Americans were assassinated because they were Asian Americans. Well, it is all that. It's like the virus right now, right? It's like a virus. And we have lived with that virus for many, many years. And we have to, that killed. Now, right now, we have a virus in our country, and we're trying to kill it. And it's working. The traffic today proved that it's working. My God, it's, it's impossible to get here. So it means the city is opening up. Forget it, the city is opening up. Okay? So how do you kill that virus? With another vaccine. That vaccine is love. I know it sounds so boring that loving other people can change the world. Right? I mean, most of us are not 70s, we would really believe that love can change by me loving another race, by me loving another religion, by me loving another sex. But I really believe in this. We believe that in a food pantry we feed 10,700 families a week. It's humongous. But the number one goal Every one of those pantries is to love their neighbors. Today was like 100 degrees. We have seniors coming out, picking up food. We have young kids running all over the place. And you have to feel that. Why? Because we look at ourselves. We found our fault. We are changing those things. And we have to move. Really have to look love our neighbors. So let's vaccinate ourselves with love every morning. And let's go out and change the world. Thank you. Thank you very much for all you do to um, assist with the food security efforts. And we also want to introduce now another incredible organization that's always providing food throughout the borough, ICNA Relief USA. I'd like to acknowledge Ishak Alpur, who is here, and ask Movi Siddiqui to please join us at the podium. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Actually, I don't want to give this food and I ask her and then my friend Isaac al sent me this code of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's call Hadith. Then I want to talk now. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The best among you is the one who doesn't harm others with the tongue and hand. This doesn't say a Muslim. So we are talking about human. Before I start, I need one minute silence. One minute silence. Those who lost their lives in San Jose, 3,000 miles from away, from here. So it's, it's also the hate. So one minute silent. Thank you. And right now, I will take only two to three minutes. I'm really proud to be in this hall. It was named by first elected Afro-American woman ever in Queens. And I'm proud to stand with my brother, who always, whenever I call him, he always says, yes, I'm coming. And the, I think you were the first black man ever elected to this. This is, things are changing. It's not that fast 
like technology has changed so far but alhamdulillah america is changing you know you see when black life matter start you see all the on the street is not only black people i see more whites than blacks i see more african more asian than blacks it means we are changing but we have to change and we are proud i'm proud i'm here i live in queens which is the most diverse area i think on the earth not in the world so alhamdulillah and this is a good sign because i myself i never like the bouquet of one color roses i always like the different color, you know if the roses in this with a different color so we are bouquet we are music mosaic so alhamdulillah we are living is this queens so now what happened in other part of the world yes is concerned i have my own strong views if someone have right to access so other one have right to live in their houses nobody have right to kick them but both so we are not talking then because we, we both have a strong views but we both have opportunities to change this world with our action with our talk and with our behavior if we you we give right message to world in united states this is a neutral place we have to talk i see those some people they are christian they are raising voice for their jewish brother what happened in israel but at the same time i see a lot of jewish people in the demonstration against this right so it means we love each other there is some misunderstanding you know what happened uh, i was talking i i came to uh, uh, to imam barga but this way they you know someone burned their religious flag and they grabbed the heading is must i was talking uh, to my friend he's suppose he is uh, happened to a muslim officer president of muslim officer society then i was talking over the you know they did with the muslim and they did the, the muslim they attack this masjid so all of a sudden he he, he take out his phone and he say you know what i i just got the report some young people they attack jewish man they do it and this i mean you know we all was muslim in the room but nobody support this action says shouldn't be like this is you have to condemn this action because whoever attacked the jewish brothers that's not right so this is the queens and this we want this queens like this so uh, i this my large words what happened last years uh, i as in their witness mashallah what we did as a queen as ikna relief mashallah we during the pandemic we were in the street we were in the hospital we were in funeral home and when i saw the lines Corona is not asking your Jewish or Black or Asian. They are attacking. The Corona is affecting everyone. I mean, every Thursday we have a line. This line is, you know, the you know, Afro American brothers, our white brothers, our Asian brothers in the line for food because our need is one. Is the need our need is same. So our action should be the same to support each other because we can always. I always see. You remember one scene in the last my words. You've seen in the in the movie Nemo when the fish they travel together. They can you know they doubt the net. So the same thing. If we force each other, we support each other to bring this world towards peace. So we will, inshallah, get the peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, inshallah. I'd love to call up Brendan Fay. He is the founder of the St. Pat's for All Parade. Thank you for being with us today. My fellow residents of Queens, my fellow New Yorkers, my name is Brendan Fay. I am the founder of the Irish LGBT group, Lavender and Green Alliance, and the inclusive. St. Pat's for All Parade, which began here in Sunnyside. Why? Because of our experience of prejudice and exclusion from every other parade in New York City, saying we did not belong. And at each Queen's Pride celebration here in June, as we make our way through Jackson Heights, we pause by the street signs, Julio Rivera and Eddie Garzon, young gay men like me, human beings, residents of Queens, whose lives were cut short so brutally and by, so violently because of hate. 
and anti-gay prejudice. You and I, all of us, are here with our eyes open and our hearts broken. Yesterday was the first anniversary of the racist, brutal murder of George Floyd. But thanks to a courageous young person, we all are witnesses. We have witnessed here, of course, in New York, story after story of hate and bias and prejudice. But we are here with hearts burning for change longing to find new ways to belong to each other as neighbors in the human family. Once again, we are in search of new ways to be better neighbors with each other here in Queens, our home. Isn't that, that's our question. That's my question for myself today. Who, Brendan, is your neighbor? Who, Brendan, told you not to be neighbors with? But life York, doesn't it? Life in New York compels us to leave the comfort of the old familiar tired ways that have kept us apart and divided. Life in New York compels us to say farewell to fear. Life in New York compels us, is my hope and prayer, to say hello more often to the neighbor. Life in New York compels say welcome to the stranger, as New Yorkers said to me some years ago. From across our divides and our divisions we rise, and we raise our voices in solidarity against hate and bias. We're in this struggle together. It's not for the politician or the religious person or somebody else. We're all in this together. We grieve as we remember, and we say the name and we're transformed. We grieve the hate that only leaves a trail of hurt and harm and broken hearts. The gift of New York, though, is in our very diversity, as the late Mayor David Dinkins always reminded us. Let us strive to be good neighbours, together in solidarity with our differences, our questions, our doubts, our conflicts, but without fear and violence. Together, let us remove Hate from our hearts, guns from our streets, prejudice from our curriculum and our pulpits. We are shaped by this beautiful city of New York as a city of hope and possibility. We commit to helping our city to be a place of welcome, of hope and hospitality for all. Back in 91, and I'll wrap up with this little story, at a moment of terrible crisis, bigotry, ignorance, and division, in our Irish community, in our city, around the St. Patrick's Parade, the late Mayor David Dinkins, New York's first African-American mayor, left the traditional front, honorable place at the St. Patrick's Parade, and he stepped back to walk alongside us, Irish LGBT newly arrived immigrants. Along the avenue as hate was shouted and screamed and beer cans were thrown, Mayor David Dinkins spoke in words I will never forget and by example forever taught all of us how to respond to prejudice and hate with dignity. And later he, he wrote a letter AIDS activist Robert Riger here in Astoria in Queens. So here's his words. We must not flinch from our responsibility ever to widen the circle of tolerance. I would rather be booed in a parade than bow down to the forces of exclusion, fear, and intolerance. Unless we all work together to put an end to discrimination based on race, religious faith, national origin, age, physical ability, and sexual orientation, the future of our city will be bleak. But by working together to fight discrimination against some of us, we will improve the quality of life for all of us. Today, all of us here in this hall 
are determined bearers of hope for our city and our community. We rise together as bearers of hope. Together, we can overcome. Thank you, Borough President Donovan Richards, for your leadership and bringing us together. so much, Brendan, for standing in unity today. I'd like to call my good friend Harpreet from the Sea Cultural Society. Thank you. Thank you, Borough President, for putting this together. You are actually looking at a living example of the people who have hated me just because the way I looked and I refuse to accept that hate because what happens is if you start accepting the hate even before you know you become a hater and you don't want to be and I never wanted to be in that line I, I refuse to accept it and I started working to at least make a change which I can, which the people can understand. My name is Harpi Singh Tour. I'm proud to be standing here today, but not proud about, of what we're talking about. It has been one year since George Floyd's murder shook the world, and people stood up everywhere about what happened. Unfortunately, since then, the number of acts of hate has steadily increased here in Queens as well as in the rest of America. Unsuspecting people being pushed, being stabbed, or hurting them by saying the words which will hurt them. Sikhs, Muslims, Asians, Blacks, Jews walk the streets of this nation, especially of this city, and particularly the borough of Queens, but never knowing what's around the corner, which is the sad situation where we are today. Parents have concerned about their kids. The recent explosion of violence directed towards Asians or Jews or anybody, it should not be accepted, not at all. Especially the attacks which we are witnessing against the Jews is a result of perhaps at least in part of disturbing rhetoric coming from the top for some time. And then what happened in Gaza, both sides suffered, not one side. And guns are not the solution to anything. Every solution has been found on the table. And they need to understand that. Some people think that the BDS policy or anti-Zionism, if I may say, it will make a difference. I have never seen by courting anything makes a difference. It has always been reaching out, communicating. In 2012 in Oak Ridge, a Gurdwara was attacked by one of the white supremacists. Six people were killed, including the president and the priest of the Gurdwara. The son of the president, he decided to do something which nobody has done before. He reached out to the president of the group of that white supremacists, started talking, and guess what? Today they talk to each other almost two to three times a week. Because they went to each other's place, they shared, they talked about it, and they came to understand what it is and that's what we need 
we can have a million laws on the book they will not they will never and they will not change the mentality the mentality has to be changed from home and the schools and i once again thank the president of queensboro richard donovan to put this thing together because he knows what hate is he feels what hate is and he doesn't want it to be on his watch and none of us wants it to be on our watch thank you thank you very much thank you everyone i'd now like to call back our master communal bridge builder our borough president donovan richards to close us out thank you all for coming i i don't think there's anything left to say I mean, if I had to end this and close it out, I would say there is only one race, and that is the human race. So thank you all for coming. And we all have work to do to continue to build these bridges. But today was certainly a show, a showing of solidarity. And we got to continue to do this and to speak out against hate each and every day. So thank you for coming.